thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm, you know, I grew up in Tucson and um, quickly, I've been doing this about 10 years now and very quickly um, moved internationally. It, it, it uh, became something that was full-time job for me and um, I, I originally got my undergrad degree in sculpture and my master's degree in landscape architecture. Um, at the University of Arizona, uh, my, so my whole family's down there, and um, I did a few projects down in Tucson. I just kind of just some background of uh, putting things together and how the process works. But um, quickly, I moved out of the state of Arizona, so it's nice to be back here. Um, you know, I think my aesthetic is—it's uh, got a contemporary look, uh, but I'm also got, got a local voice, so it's. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a nice blend for you guys. Um, so I started out doing all my own fabrication, welding, uh, construction, and uh, quickly the sculptures became so large that uh, now I have a fabrication team helping me. Um, but this is kind of early on, so I, I kind of know the ins and outs of, of how it's all put together. I use very uh, standard materials um, in order to you know, produce longevity in the pieces. Um, and then my, my emphasis is really on their popularity and that they draw the community to them, that they're um, gathering spaces, they're social um, indicators. Uh, this is actually Day of the Dead Parade down in Tucson. Um, they, they tend to um, be very popular with um, all ages and they're they're incorporating day and night experiences. Um, so uh, I think this is why um, you know, I've had so much success with them in the past. I also do a lot of community engagement. If that is something we can do, great. I'm available for it. Um, I love to get the community involved early on. Um, kids, older, and you know, any, any community groups that are interested. So I'm available for that. Um, I'll just go through a little bit of my past work. So I have worked all over the world, um, again, doing this about 10 years. Um, the screen's a little small, but uh, this is actually in Texas, at a university in Texas. Um, I use stainless steel and LED lighting. Those are common materials. Uh, this projection is often happening. Uh, engagement with the community to to um, create patterns and text and, and imagery like that has, has been an ongoing process. Um, so you can see how light runs through the work. It's, um, I use interactive LEDs that change color. They can be programmed to different sequences. Uh, they're very long lasting and you can replace them easily if needed. This is in San Antonio and a freeway underpass. Um, this one's up in Calgary. Um, another common theme that is in my work is that it's an abstraction of nature. So this is actually a weather pattern. It's called cloud ring. Um, you can see here I'm, I'm using an acrylic material. So that's a, a common material I've also used. And um, I'm going to be presenting some, some options today for material choices. But um, this has a, has a good shelf life. Uh, I've used it in Tucson for a decade or so. And, um, this, you know, this one's up in Canada, so it's got a broad range of, of longevity there. Um, again, looking at nature, so this is a school of fish that's come out of a river, another campus in Texas. Uh, and then engaging the community in that social kind of creative space, um, bringing public art to the public and making it something very accessible that's um, part of my interest. Um, this is up in Portland. It's um, interactive. It takes your heartbeat um, and then projects that in lights and sounds. Um, so it's an emergency coordination center. We're talking about the life of the, uh, you know, projecting your life onto the piece. Uh, so again, stainless steel, acrylic, and LED lighting. And then um, the final one I'll show you today is this is in Denver. It's called um, Biota. Um, Again, looking with those common materials and nature abstracted. Uh, this was actually in the New York Times. Um, go visit the top, you know, 10 public art pieces. Um, so that was kind of a nice um, 
article about it. Um, so I'll just get into yours. So um, I know um, I've reviewed the intersection. I've grown up in this in this um, environment, so I understand kind of these the situations of this context. And um, I'm just gonna uh, start with this, and we'll go into some of some of the explanation of how what inspired it. Um, so we've got some scale people here. Um, so what I'm looking at really, and I'm, I'm, I'm titling this Aspire um, as a way to talk about the Peoria community and its kind of aspirations for um, the future. And, and uh, the actual piece is representing a columnar cactus form. So um, when you get up into the details of it, um, it's actually got a subtle pleated surface like a cactus would have, how it goes in and out. And, um, but subtly, so it's, it's one that's, you know, full of water and not dehydrated, how they get when they're... But the idea is that it's got, pot it's the potential, it's holding that, all of that potential in it to create that volume. I, I love creating closed volumes. I think in this light and, and space of an outdoors, um, uh, an enclosed volume like this has a real presence in the desert. Um, so um, this is actually at my house down in Tucson showing some of um, kind of that inspiration for a desert form. Um, th that's a Mexican fence post cactus. Uh, and you can see I'm, I'm suggesting uh, color changing uh, with, with a, a steel surface uh, with this pattern on it that I'll go more into. but. Um, Basically, it's going to be an acrylic backing with a steel surface to create the pattern. It's going to have a post up the center, similar to a light post, and then everything connects to that. So that's how the engineering's going to be structurally um, put together. Um, I, I've done s similar ones before uh, with that sort of columnar structure in the middle. Um, so we've got, uh, right now, I've got it as uh, a common steel. Maybe, maybe I'll use stainless for this environment. It'll be a satin type finish, so it'll reflect some of the sunlight during the day. And then this diffused acrylic will soften um, and be more, more of a matte experience. So these, these are also inspirations that I'm looking at. So the, the bud of the cactus, so you can get that swollen type idea when you're looking at it. The, these are different uh, views so you can kind of get that pleating look when you're up close or looking up under it. Um, also inspirations of the cactus fruit. So all of these abstracted into this form. Um, a few more examples of that from above. So the actual LED lighting will be more sophisticated uh, in that we can, we can do a range of colors within the piece at one given time. Um, that'll be pre-programmed sequences. Um, we can talk about adjusting those for events and days of the year and that type of thing just to um, bring out. Um, I've, I've worked with lighting for a long time now, so communities have different reactions to uh, how they want to present it, but um, it can be a gorgeous animated experience. So, you know, these pictures are stills, but really the animation of the lighting will be more fluid. Uh, the, so the surface pattern is really looking at kind of this uh, skeletal structure, um, which I think is just an amazing, uh, gorgeous uh, structural way of, of nature coming out of of a cactus form, so you get that fluidity. It's also kind of reminds me of water flowing or, or um, uh, you know, a schooling sort of c composite. Um, so that would be the steel on top of it. And then at night, you get 
the steel will be more silhouetted and darker and then the lighting will be brighter during the day uh, the the steel will reflect some of the sunlight and then uh, that the acrylic will be more of a matte surface you can leave the lights on during the day for a subtle effect like this here uh, the darker we go you know the more brilliant this is going to be um, so we, right now I have it as um, a, a satin finish on the, the metal and then a diffused uh, surface on the acrylic um, so that would be kind of this effect in the daytime with the sunlight coming through it I've used this combination in a number of environments um, we can also discuss the option of adding daytime color by painting the steel. Um, so this one up in Denver, the, the steel framework is actually painted blue, so you get some of that daytime color into the sculpture. So if that's interesting to you, um, that's an option as well. Um, here's how that might look um, with, with the background diffusion of white and then a, a color applied to the surface. So basically, that's kind of the general theme of it. Um, I know I wanted to leave time for questions, so I'll just leave it up as this. Uh, sure. Oh, yes. Right now I have it at 25 feet, and it, it um, widens to five feet at the widest here, down to a foot and a half, and that's about two feet. Um, what I'm hoping to do is stretch that to 30. I have to go through my engineering process first to know what I can do with the height. What's, your, what's the biggest the pole? The center pole, well, um, based on past experience, it's going to be a six inch. six inch. Yeah. But we'll, again, it'll be engineered and that might, that might change, but it'll be a standard type of um, center spine there. Um, I haven't uh, prototyped it yet to know how many LED fixtures will be in there, but it'll, uh, there'll be quite a few up and down the length of it, so we can create qu quite a dynamic experience with the lighting effect. How does the lighting get changed or maintained when, I don't know how long they last, but how sure. change it? Well, if you decide to leave it on during the day and have this more kind of diffused uh, glow. There's so much light in here that you're not really getting the effect, the full effect of that really dark experience. That, that'll probably be more um, the nighttime. But this, this would be your daytime type experience. So if you left it on during the day, I'm thinking a 10 year lifespan for the LEDs. If you just decide night, that'll you know, extend. I'll be doing uh, access hatches so that you can replace them and they'll be off the shelf components so they can be reordered easily. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're saying, um, in one of your earlier slides, um, I think that there was a piece that didn't have a cloak and the, the light kind of came. The projection. Will you, will you compare that to your prototype here? Or is it in, um, no, this is uh, no. I'll just hand this out. But um, actually, I only have four. But we can share. Okay, um, that is an option as well. You know, the projection idea. It's often done on a big hardscape surface. That's where it shows the best. Um, this one, it's more of a diffused. It's holding the light in a more of a contained way. So. Um, but it's, it's possible too, we, if you like that look, if you like that idea of it casting out more than the piece, um, that's... Is that also LED? That was LED projection. Mm -hmm. LED projection is different than this, it's just LED light. Um, the only difference in this is that I've added a diffusion material to capture and hold it. So it's got more of a glowing effect than, uh, than that projection. So, uh, so we could we could t discuss removing the diffusion material if you like the projection. Um, it does work best on a surface that's more got more hardscape, and I know this um, particular one it's got the landscape around it, um, which I'm happy to work with if you have a landscape architect involved. I do have that background, 
So um, you know, I'm happy to work with the surrounding area if you if you'd like. I'd love to do 30, yeah. So, that, so with that and talking about the projection, obviously the projection, the higher that up, the further it's going to go out, how big of the part surface would you need to make a projection? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's going to go out pretty far right now. Um, you know, these ones will, will cast. I'm, I'm guessing a cone. Let's see, that's a 10 foot. Um, I would say probably a 30 foot. Or the so diameter. Nice. It would be nice if it was a hardscape, or at least, you know, pretty open. Like, like the DG is probably fine. You're not going to get the crisp shadows unless you have, uh, like, a hard, flat surface. Um, but if that's something you like, um, I think we can we can modify to do projection very easily with this form. And the the idea was um, I wasn't sure. If you were more interested in people coming to it, which, you know, how many people are coming to it versus people driving by or looking at it m further from a distance. So um, that's kind of projection versus like a glowing effect. My, the glowing effect is probably something that has a bigger impact further uh, as you're driving by. Um, and, but if you want to draw people to it, yeah, the projection would be great. And you know we could talk about a combination because um, there's ways to that we could we could filter this um, um, acrylic surface that we could do a little bit of both. That would be a fun effect for me because I I usually do one or the other, but it would be nice to uh, have a new technique where maybe we we did some subtle pinholing or or things in that um, diffusion surface. So you could get that combination. Yeah, I was going to ask you that do a combination because my worry for the first eight feet would be people sticking their hands in it. Right. Stuff. Yeah. But if you have it from eight feet up or that project, that would right. be impossible. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then again the daytime color. If you want, you know, I, I love this, I, this this look with the white and silver. I think it's it's very elegant. But you know, you may want something a little bit more robust with um, a, drawing attention to it during the day. So we could we could add that painted effect on the steel. Did you say that there was only one foot at the base? Hmm? Yeah, one foot diameter. No, that's at the top. Uh, the, the top's a foot and a half, so I think this is, I think, two and a half. And then it goes to five. So, I mean, you can, then, uh, in a high degree, you're going to reach that out. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to be a sturdy piece. Yes. Yeah, so there'll be, um, you know, a very s structural pole down the center of it. And then, um, you know, I make things for interaction, so they'll, it'll be touchable. Um, we can talk about aluminum if you're concerned with the heat, you know, touching with the heat here too. So that's an element that, you know, or the painted steel if you're concerned about people touching directly on the metal. Uh, but the surface will be laser cut, and so that allows for people, you know, there won't be a lot of like burl or anything that could affect you when you touch it. So. Exactly. That's what I'm imagining, something um, pretty dynamic that would, um, that would emphasize, I think, the columnar aspect of it, so it might flow up and down and give, some, uh, give that animated movement to the lighting. Versus what you have now, just for example. Yes, yes, so it'll be much more sophisticated uh, in the actual programming. This is just a, um, a basic strip light that you can, that you can buy for the model, but Yeah, I'm trying to think if I left anything out. Um, again, if there's um, community engagement you'd like me to participate in, um, I'm happy to do that. I think, you know. Without, like, what are you thinking for the community 
Um, well, I'm actually working. Um, I'll be here fairly regularly over the next few months because I'm working on one of the Phoenix Metro stations for the new um, South Central extension. So um, I can be available for it. Um, I, I love involving um, youth is my uh, primary target audience. So I like going into schools. I like, I, you know, churches are great centers for that type of activity. Usually what I do is um, I, I, I try to get a personal connection with the artwork and, and uh, the local community. So whether that's um, it, go, coming in with some, some activity that they can physically engage with, um, you know, where they can design their own surface pattern and they, they can... Um, um, it can be influenced by that. This, this is, um, you know, it's got that skeletal structure. So right now, um, the artwork, I think, is the most, um, uh, from my perspective, like looking at your community from, you know, me coming in. But the more we get involved in an engagement process, the more this could alter to reflect some of that local story. Mm -hmm which I have a lot of experience with. So it sounds abstract now, but it's actually something I'm well versed in integrating. Um, if somebody shares, you know, something that, that has personal connection to them. It's, uh, it's good to include those with maybe some of our public events, mm -hmm. um, festivals. Yeah, exactly. Festivals. Something that's already going on and then you set up a, a workshop or something fun that people can easily join in. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing? Do you have any more questions? We have the opportunity. Absolutely. Yep. Good segue. Yeah. So why don't we confer for just a few minutes okay. and see if we can come up with any more questions before we let you leave? All right. <laughs> yeah. Satisfied that we understand the project. Okay. Great. Uh, do you have anything that you wanted to add? Or um, I guess time timeline maybe is. Um, I know. Hopefully we can quickly. Reach a decision shortly, mm -hmm. it today or this week. Uh, I don't know if we'll require any further. Discussion. Well, actually, I meant um, uh, installation oh, wise. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> my process. Take your time in deciding. Yeah. That's fine. Um, She's got a lot of I I realized that your timeline for install is pretty quick. Is or, or, you know so. Yeah, I, yeah, a lot of times we start with a baseline of six months, yeah. and then we can talk. Right. We can do it right. faster or we can go okay. faster we need more yeah. time. If you have another project that you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, we'll work with you. Yeah, exactly. It works with like a role of the time. Yes, exactly. Like if there's an you event. To use a, an event to, mm -hmm. right. to, to, to use that showcase it. Yes. You have to find that yes. event. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. So That's it. And, and flexibility if you want some modifications and, you know, you want me to go in a, well, that's good to an, know. another it's direction good to somewhat. Yeah. So it's all flexible at this point. You know, I'm, I want it to be for you guys and, and fit well with your community. So we appreciate that. Yes. <laughs> so I'm happy to be invited. Thank, Thank you. you.